is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked on Sports Atlanta, where today I remind you to respect the process. Welcome in. We are live here on this Friday, getting you set for the weekend and a recap of the Atlanta Hawks draft from last night. Chris Kirshner of The Athletic will join us here uh, in just a few minutes, and we'll get his uh, pro inside reaction to what the Hawks did last night. Of course, Braves, Freddie Freeman. Coming back to Truist Park tonight with the Dodgers. Big series for them. We'll get to that. A couple of betting tips before we get out for uh, the weekend here on this Friday. Don't forget to give us a follow on Twitter at LockedOnATL. Of course, I'm at Mark Zinno, M-A-R-K-Z-I-N-N-O. And subscribe and like our YouTube channel as well. Okay. Last night was the NBA draft. And what the Hawks did well was, eh, you know, it was what it was. Like I, It's not anything anybody, I don't think anybody should be upset about. The drafting of A.J. Griffin, I thought, was a good move. Uh, this is a young man. We have to remember he's only 18 years old, but he's an excellent shooter, uh, great from three-point range, and he's lengthy. And in reality, it's like you can never have enough shooting in the NBA, right? Like th there is – of all the things you can never have enough of, it's shooting. It's similar to starting pitching and similar to like offensive linemen in the NFL. You can never have enough shooting in the NBA. So getting another shooter – in the Hawks lineup, it, it, let's just assume Kevin Herter stays there or, and Bogey or whoever else is there. Is still, there's a lot of shooters, and it's not a bad thing to get another one. Um, Griffin, like his defense is in his calling card, but he's lengthy and he's long. And that, I guess, is what they're looking for on the defensive end. But again, he's 18 years old. Um, not too many people focus on the defensive part of their game when they're that young, especially when they're playing at a school like Duke where – you know, that's a team that averaged almost 85 points a game uh, during the season, which is incredibly high for college hoops. And and scoring was the thing, and that's what he did really well. But I think I, I like the selection of him. He feels a little schematically, and I'm not saying he's drawing comparisons to this player, but he feels a little schematically to me, kind of like what Clay Thompson does for Steph is hopefully one day what Griffin can do for Trey. When you have that alternate shooter, when you have that that guy from the outside who everybody has to respect, then you're clearly going to change things offensively for your best player, which is again what Clay does a little bit for does a lot of it for Steph. And I, I'm not making an inline comparison. Trust me, I'm not. What I'm just saying is schematically and, and objectively what a shooter of this nature who can hit 45% from three uh, on a routine basis can do for other players on the offense, not just the best player. But Trey is obviously a guy, again, who can make this young man um, better by, you know, being the excellent passer that he is and create more opportunities for him and everything else. So uh, I like the selection of it. Uh, the Hawks in the second round, they draft Ryan Rollins out of Toledo, uh, and then they sell that pick to uh, the Golden State Warriors for Tyrese Martin of UConn. Uh, more defensive-minded player, big body, um, you know, but again, not really like a high-level score. We'll see. Uh, he can shoot from three as well. I think he shot 43% last year from three um, for, for the UConn Huskies. But, you know, the selling of the pick is interesting because you got nothing in return other than money. Um, and that's, you know, that's the difficult part. You didn't make a basketball move. You made a financial move. And that's the part I think that really is questionable – um, for the Hawks, um, if you're trying to get better, flat out cash doesn't make you better. Like salary cap space may, can make you better, but cash itself doesn't make you better. So it's a little bit perplexing from that standpoint. And the other thing I think that, that has everybody kind of questioning about last night more than anything was the non-move of John Collins, who everybody expected to be moved. And look, uh, John Collins is probably going, but I would argue too, like objectively, is it the worst thing in the world if he doesn't get moved? Like, is it awful to say that he's he's going to be uh, here next year? I don't think it's the worst thing. If they end up trading away Capella and Okongwu, you know, even if they want to trade Okongwu, I know they really like him and he's young and he's cheap. But, you know, if they were to do something like that, does that mean that the Hawks are 
in worse position. No, Collins is a good player. Like, let's be objective about what he is and what he's not. Um, is he a superstar? No. Is he a top 50 player in the league? Probably. Probably in the top 50. Um, whereas Trey is in the top 15. You know, I think that that's fair. So you're not like in awful position just by having John Collins on your roster. I mean, look, chances are, again, he's not going to be here. But uh, when he gets moved and what he gets moved for and how he gets moved, I think is all up in the air. And, and we haven't 100% figured that out yet. But still, you know, this is a uh, situation where at the very beginning, the first step of the offseason, there is more moves to be made. There's more to do. Um, and this is a team that, that, you know, while trying to get better. And as I said, did anything they do last night catapult them into the top three in the East? No. Um, that doesn't mean that they're bad moves. Remember. The expectation level I talked to you guys about all week long has been shot through the roof and it doesn't need to be. That's why I say remember where we are in the process. Respect the process because they shouldn't be a Eastern Conference Finals level team. And they they weren't an Eastern Conference level Finals team. They just beat a bad Knicks team and took advantage of a flawed 76ers team. And, and I don't want to take anything away from them for doing that. But in the big picture process-wise, they're not talented enough to get back to the Eastern Conference Finals every year like – Miami is like, you know, uh, uh, Boston or Milwaukee. Like they're not, they're just, they're not that caliber of team yet. They've got to get there. Fingers crossed they will. All right, coming up next, we will talk to Chris Kirshner of The Athletic. What did he think of the Hawks draft night? And when will John Collins be moved? We'll do that coming up next right here on A to Z. Free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast, you search Locked On Sports Atlanta. We'll be right back. Stay with us. 